So welcome to today's uh, discussion on ethnography. At its simplest, ethnography tries to study how people lead their lives. And the research philosophy is naturalism, which suggests that the social world should be studied in its natural context or in its natural setup undisturbed by the researcher and we'll find out how ethnography is done and how these problems are defined and uh, how do we do the writing of the uh, ethnographic research which is a very very important uh, part of ethnography so uh, let's uh, begin the discussion today so ethnography begins with the description of the problem and then the decision has to be made whether that problem is suitable for an ethnographic research. The other decision that has to be made is whether we use uh, uh, the basic uh, ethnic research or we uh, do the applied research. Uh, we base our observations on, on uh, certain theories that we've uh, uh, come across or we think should be applicable for the uh, present problem. We design the ethnographic study, which basically consists of different kinds of field work. And then the data collection, and then there are certain tools to collect that data. And finally, we analyze that uh, uh, data and create the ethnographic report. So these are the eight stages that we're going to discuss in today's uh, uh, discussion. So as I said at the beginning, ethnography tries to understand how people live their lives. So it's a qualitative research design in which the researcher describes and interprets the shared and learned patterns of values, behaviors, beliefs and language of a culture sharing group. So we'll de describe a culture sharing group in, in, in subsequent slides. but. Uh, this is a design in which the uh, researcher describes and interprets the shared and learned patterns. We'll uh, uh, elaborate on the shared part as well because the researcher uh, is, uh, embeds himself with the community or participates in a particular community which we are describing as a culture sharing group. And then he find, uh, find, uh, finds and interprets the shared and learned patterns of values, behaviors, beliefs and language. Basically uh, different aspects of culture of that particular group. So as we said in the beginning, this believes in naturalism as opposed to positivism where uh, the social world should be studied in a natural state undisturbed, uh, undisturbed by the uh, researcher. And the, researcher uh, and the research must be carried out in such ways that are sensitive to the nature of the setting and that of the phenomenon being uh, investigated. So we'll talk about various uh, participants uh, settings uh, as, as we go along, but important to remember that the researcher must be sensitive to the nature of the setting and also the phenomenon. So these are the steps of uh, ethnographic research and uh, we'll be discussing uh, these things. So ethnography begins with the determination of whether it is the most appropriate design for studying the research problem. Uh, then we identify and locate a culture sharing group, a group which shares the same culture uh, as we'll uh, uh, describe it later to study as well as access. So uh, this identification is, is based on, on uh, access considerations as well that whether the researcher has access to uh, that culture sharing group or uh, people might call them as community as well. So then we select the cultural themes, issues or theories to study about the group. So th these are uh, decisions are made before the actual field work that what are the cultural themes or what are the issues or, or what are the theories that we are trying to uh, look into uh, during our field work of the particular group that we have identified and which uh, we, we want to study. So then we determine which type of ethnography to use to study the culture, uh, cultural concepts we'll be uh, discussing. There are various kinds of ethnographies. There could be a critical ethnography. There, there are visual ethnographies. There, is, there are uh, even digital ethnographies as we know. So which type of ethnography is used to study these cultural concepts? Then we gather information about that culture sharing group in the context where the group works or lives and that is through extensive field work. And that might involve the researcher to uh, stay with the community in its natural setting. And after that, the researcher generates an overall cultural interpretation of the group from the analysis of many data sources. So we'll be talking about all the different data sources. 
then this uh, pattern of the cultural sharing group is uh, disseminated by using a holistic cultural portrait and we'll see that one of the defining features of ethnography is that it uh, tries to provide a holistic portrait and then that uh, pattern has to be uh, shared uh, generally in a written format so ethnographic research is written in a uh, unique kind of a format so as we uh, said in the beginning the ethnography uh, uh, has to be justified or the ethnographic approach has to be justified and if the research questions are about how a cultural group works and whether we want to explore the beliefs the language the behavior and the uh, issues facing that group and that uh, issues could be power resistance dominance and such things so uh, if, if these are the questions that we are looking for then uh, ethnography is an appropriate method but that decision has to be made uh, very clear and that uh, decision has also to be expressed clearly by the researcher in his report once we've uh, decided the appropriateness of the method the next next task is to locate a culture sharing group and this is a group whose members have been together for an extended period of time so that their shared language their patterns of behavior and attitudes have merged into discernible patterns we can discern those uh, uh, patterns of shared languages of behavior of attitudes and such things uh, this uh, 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 culture sharing group can also be a marginalized group a group that has been marginalized by society so the decision for locating this group or identifying this group is related to the research questions uh, we will uh, see that there are very many forms of ethnography we have a confessional ethnography we we can talk about life histories we will uh, also talk about auto ethnography the feminist ethnography there are ethnography novels and the visual ethnography but uh, in today's discussion we'll be generally talking about the descriptive eth ethnography and uh, uh, critical ethnography so uh, we are uh, going to decide about whether the group needs uh, whether the group that we have identified or the culture sharing uh, group that we have identified whether that just needs to be described and if we just need to describe the group and the patterns that we spoke of there then we'll be doing a descriptive ethnography uh, but if we want to expose issues such as power hegemony or even uh, advocacy for for certain issues and for certain groups in that case we'll be doing critical ethnography so uh, the two most general types are descriptive and critical ethnographies so uh, the, in in the critical ethnography method the authors advocate for the emancipation of groups marginalized in society so uh, there is a clear uh, advocacy in that kind of a approach and uh, it is always uh, also uh, described as a value laden orientation because it uh, talks about empowering people by giving them more authority by challenging the status quo and also addressing concerns about power and control so the critical ethnography tries to look at the issues of power and also of these power relations so a critical ethnographer would study uh, power empowerment inequality inequity dominance whether uh, certain groups are dominating other or whether whether certain elements in a group are dominating others about repression about hege hegemony and about victimization so when we do critical ethnography we are advocating uh, 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 for the emancipation of groups marginalized in society the most important work or the hallmark of ethnographic uh, method is a field work where the ethnographer uh, gets a first hand cultural or social experience that cannot be gained otherwise so in the natural setting of the social world the uh, uh, ethnographer uh, uh, immerses himself socially or culturally and it's uh, regarded as a very important way of seeing and that seeing is through experiencing through inquiring and through examining so we'll find out the various ways of participation that the ethnographer uh, can indulge himself in but that, that is the uh, as i said the hallmark of ethnographic methods 
often a stratified uh, sample is taken by ethnographers to select the members which are most appropriate in different categories or roles so uh, for interviewing the members in that uh, culture sharing group the ethnographer would uh, select people in different categories and different roles and the number of people in this uh, different categories or role is representative of their, their their real representation in that particular group the culture sharing group so this is a, a, a kind of the different observer roles that the researcher can play or does play in an ethnographic research so one of it is that the ethnographer or the researcher has a non-participant role and even there he could be there in two different uh, capacities it could be off-site where he is not there in the natural setting but but uh, at some place away or he could be there on site but not being a participant in that particular group or not being a participant in that culture sharing group so that is a non-participant ob uh, observation uh, the other thing is that the uh, ethnographer could be a participant observer and even in participant observation there are three different roles that he can play so he could be a passive particip participant so he's there but is not participating in the activities of the group the other could be that he is there uh, and he's participating in the activities of the group and finally there's a role uh, of, of complete participant where the ethnographer or the researcher has all the credentials to be a member of that particular group so for example if he's studying uh, a cricket team for example then he has all the credentials to be a member of that particular team so that is uh, how we distinguish between a complete participant and a participant observer so in participant observation the ethnographer becomes self as an in instrument so he's in himself an instrument he the researcher is himself or herself an instrument and data are collected in field notes written in the moment but it it may also be written later in reflection and these repeated observations with varying level of participation uh, provide the means of how the ethnography makes the exotic familiar and the familiar exotic so that's a very nice way of describing ethnographic research but a word of caution that if and uh, this is based on uh, cognitive science and this is known as the hawthorn effect that people who are being observed either consciously or unconsciously change what is being measured because they are aware of the observer so that uh, and this is a very common thing that if we assume or if we know that somebody is observing us then probably will be in our best behavior we might not be in in our natural behavior so that is one thing that the researcher has to be, keep in mind that if people know that they are being watched consciously or unconsciously that would uh, bring about a change in their natural behavior so that is why these uh, covert and overt observation roles are important so uh, when the role is that of covert and unobtrusive so uh, the researcher is uh, there uh, present secretively or almost as an uh, as, as an undercover researcher so those being observed uh, have no knowledge about the observer's true identity or the purpose of the observer being there so uh, th that can provide uh, richer uh, 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 details about uh, the group being studied because they are not aware that they are being watched the other thing is uh, the overt process where the participants are made aware of the researcher and also the identity of the researcher so they are aware that they are being researched upon and they are also aware of the person who is researching them the uh, researcher often has to rely on one or two key individuals in the group they are studying and these people are known as key actors so these key actors provide ethnographers with rich detailed autobiographical descriptions of themselves and they also help identify members of the community so they are extremely important in the research process and ethnographers have to uh, keep a close eye on the who could be key actors in that particular group so uh, the ethnographic researchers are likely to supplement their observations with in-depth interviews group discussions and documentary review
so uh, as we uh, saw in the steps being described at the beginning we have to decide on the themes on which we uh, are going to study the group so these themes may include topics like enculturation or socialization or or the learning process that goes on in the uh, culture sharing group or cognition or issues of domination or even uh, development or uh, uh, personal development questions of inequality so uh, the ethnographer begins the study by examining people in interaction in ordinary setting and he discerns and tries to see pervasive patterns such as life cycles events and cultural themes so these patterns are what the ethnographer is looking for uh it involves an extended observation of the group so it might take a, lo a lot of time so that this research is is uh, Uh, generally uh, spread out over weeks if not months and uh, through uh, the participant observation the researcher is immersed in the day to day lives of the people and observes and interviews the group participants and uh, as we just said the researcher looks for patterns so they could be rituals they could be customary social behaviors about how people interact with each other or how people greet each other for example or regularities in their life patterns and also their ideas and beliefs which are expressed through languages or activities of how they behave within the group or uh, uh, how the researcher uh, sees uh, that that behavior or which the researcher expresses uh, this in his or her report so uh, ethnographers generally start with a theory and it could be a broad explanation as to what they hope to find so it could be drawn from cognitive sciences about uh, understanding ideas and beliefs or it could be from materialist theories also such as uh, uh, techno environmentalism it could be marxism it could be acculturation theories or uh, innovations or how uh, ideas are are, are diffused or in, uh, innovations are diffused in groups and also observe how individuals in the culture sharing group behave and talk so uh, there are theories about uh, from cognitive sciences and uh, materialist uh, theories so uh, we are trying to prove or disprove those uh, uh, elements in our uh, participant observation so using the theory and looking for patterns is uh, what what the researcher does and it uh, starts off by engaging in extensive field work so uh, could be uh, collecting lot of data not only through interviews but also through observations through various symbols that people use in their day to day lives uh, also physical artifacts and uh, uh, other such sources of data so uh, going to the research site is what is important and uh, although there are variations in that and in many cases as we've seen that ethnographer need not go to the research site but generally this is uh, uh what, what uh, ethnographers uh, do is go to the research site and respecting the daily lives of individuals uh, while they are collecting a wide variety of material so this uh, issue of respect of reciprocity and deciding who owns the data it's the part participants themselves who own the data these are central to the ethnographic research process and as we uh, have said earlier observations surveys interviews even content analysis of uh, uh, the data which is being collected uh, elicitation method so how do you elicit responses from people audio visual method so you might be recording a lot of what is happening in that particular culture sharing group uh, spatial mapping and even network research are some of the uh, methods we employ in data collection during the uh, observation process so uh, we could be uh, talking about the field notes about an observation grid as we suggested where uh, we decide that uh, how this observation will go on it could be audio and video recordings as well uh, the researcher could be using the photographs that he takes or, or the photo archival photographs and images as well it could be internet based data about that particular group and also the researcher's own reflexive journal so uh, these are the uh, sources which are used to write the ethnographic report so the writing uh, part is about the summary of the research effort during various stages of the field work so uh, ethnographic uh, ethnographic reports are uh, typically characterized by a very thick description and as all uh, uh, qualitative research 
ethnographic uh, research uh, deals with uh, lots and lots of uh, uh, descriptions and verbatim quotations as well. So uh, in the next few slides, I'll be talking about the defining features of uh, ethnographic research. So one important concept to understand is that of culture and culture comprises the ideas, the beliefs, the knowledge and behavior that characterizes a group. So what are the ideas, beliefs and knowledge uh, and behavior systems that characterize that group? So each culture has an identifiable value system that shapes behavior. So that is what uh, uh, is, is sought to be studied in an ethnographic research process. Ethnographic research is a holistic perspective. We intend to describe as much as possible about a culture or social group, including its history, including religion, politics and environment. So this conceptual lens is what enables the ethnographer to uh, see the interrelationships at the margins and multiple layers of meaning that might be overlooked in a more focused or a narrow approach. So the holistic uh, approach tries to look at those interrelationships uh, and also the multiple layers of meanings that could be present. And it's also important to contextualize that data by placing the observations into a larger perspective. So an event or behavior is uh, meaningful only when it is interpreted in a particular context. So that contextualization is an important part of the ethnographic research process. And uh, these are the two perspectives that we have to keep in mind in the ethnographic research process. The first is the emic perspective or the insider's perspective. And that is what uh, we are trying to find out, the insider's perspective uh, uh, of that particular culture group. So knowledge about a group or culture is based on the insider's views. So by identifying key actors, by identifying the people whom we uh, should observe or talk to, we get an emic perspective of that particular group. But we also use the same emic per, uh, uh, perspective uh, with an ethic perspective as well. So we uh, 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 try and place it with uh, some external social scientific posture by assembling uh, multiple insider perspectives. So after assembling the emic perspective, we also see that in, 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 in a wider con context of ethic perspective or outsider perspectives as well. Uh, a very important part of ethnographic research is to understand that the researcher has to be non-judgmental. It's vital to suspend any personal valuation of any given cultural practice. Because the moment we start to impose or try, uh, start to see a particular culture through our own lens, at that very moment, we are indulging in ethnocentric behavior. So this imposition of one culture's values and standards on another culture with the assumption that one is superior to the other, it's a fatal error in ethnography. That is simply not done in ethnography. So in ethnography, it's vital to suspend any personal valuation. So uh, retrospective interviews are what are used. So it's not only about what people do in the present, but about uh, reconstructing the past. So this uh, involves asking informants to recall personal historical information. Uh, then we also use uh, structural and attribute questions. So it's not only about the information, it's also about asking them about the knowledge, about their attitudes, about attributes, and, and all these uh, subcategories to further clarify the emic perspective, to further clarify the insider's perspective. And both open-ended and closed-ended questions are used. And often uh, when open-ended questions do not elicit answers, uh, we uh, use closed-ended methods as well. But uh, there are other unobtrusive measures also. So it could be physical evidence. It could be graffiti on, on the walls in that particular locality. It could be archival documents about that particular culture sharing group. It could be emails. It could be records. It could be census records budgets or anything uh, that uh, does not involve talking to people. So there are lots and lots of physical artifacts and physical evidence about that particular group. And the researchers also use concepts like proxemics to find out whether uh, uh, 
uh, that particular behavior is uh, whether that denotes close familial relationship or whether it denotes a distant business like relationship and researchers also use kinesics or the study of body language to find out uh, uh, about the behavior of people in that particular uh, culture sharing group so this overall cultural interpretation is important and we've already spoken of the holistic uh, perspective so this begins by compiling a detailed description of that group focusing on a single event or, or uh, several activities over a prolonged period of time and then we go into a theme analysis of patterns or topics that signifies how cultural group works and lives by providing an overall picture of the system so it's not uh, specific to incidents but an overall picture is what we are looking for in a ethnographic analysis and uh, this generally begins with describing how the culture sharing group functions and uh, by uh, after this description of this uh, culture sharing uh, uh, or this description of the way in which the group functions we uh, uh, go to the introduction of uh, of the various research processes and the details about the data collection and analysis and then we go for a cultural interpretation that describes the patterns that emerge from the analysis so from those specific instances we try and see a pattern to provide a holistic cultural portrait of the group so uh, as in uh, uh, much of uh, qualitative research writing this begins with an introduction which engages the readers attention and focuses the study uh, then the setting and the methods for learning are clarified and this is followed about uh, the entry uh, into the uh, setting into that cu cultural group setting and the participation and then the analytic claims come next so in the analytic uh, claim the author first brings an analytic point then provides information about that point and then presents the uh, excerpt or direct quote about that particular analytic point and then analysis of the uh, uh, point is done so it's it's a very straightforward process uh, in in many research uh, papers so this is about an analytic point being brought in information about the point being provided and then a direct quote or some excerpt being provided to uh, 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 reconfirm that point and then analysis of that particular point and uh, in conclusion the researcher reflects and elaborates on the thesis or the theories advanced at the beginning so the thesis may be modified or it may be uh, 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 strengthened uh, on in the light of the materials uh, uh, that came out uh, through the field work and uh, often this is also related to a current issue or to, uh, to to a general theory or it might the conclusion might also offer a meta commentary on the thesis so there is the realistic uh, uh, but, uh, way of writing the ethnographic report where the ethnographer narrates the study in a third person dispassionate voice so he is a, a distant observer and just reports what is being observed or heard from the participants so uh, the ethnographer is there in the background as a reporter of facts and he just uh, reports objective data which is free from personal bias from per political goals and judgment so uh, the researcher just provides mundane details about uh, everyday life and uses uh, the standard existing categories for uh, cultural description uh, there could also be a confessional tale where uh, the researcher focuses uh, more on his or her field work experiences than on the culture or it could be a personalized account of the field work uh, in, in dramatic form so that is an impressionist tale so we might be having uh, a confessional and impressionist uh, impressionistic uh, uh, tales as well and finally what are the criterion for good ethnography so first of all whether uh, there is a, a clear identification of a cultural sharing group whether uh, we have described the group in some detail how the group was selected how uh, access was was uh, provided and how uh, interaction with the group uh, took place then the second part uh, is about specifying a cultural theme that will be examined in the light of this particular group so the author has to identify a cultural theme and the rationale for uh, choosing those themes so we've described those themes earlier then the group has to be described in detail so creative uh, analytical practices are used to uh, provide a, a description of uh, the, the group that we're studying uh, then we communicate themes uh, derived from the understanding of the group so 
uh, the the themes from the observation of the group they are are uh, communicated then issues that arose in the field uh, that are also described uh, in the ethnographic report and uh, uh, as as we have seen a holistic explanation of how the cultural sharing group works overall and finally self disclosure and reflexivity of the researcher about uh, his or her position in the uh, research so this could include uh, uh, background experience with the group and about their reflections and interactions with the group thanks a lot for your participation in today's uh, discussion